you start with a company that builds a box. This is a pretty cool box, right? Like <laughs> this, this is a valuable box as demonstrated by all the money that people have apparently decided should be in the box. The next biggest thing since the internet itself, it is called the consumer blockchain. Just because Beanie Babies crashed in value doesn't mean stuffed animals were not gonna be important. We are in the golden era, entering the golden era of Web3. Web2 is read-write and Web3 is read-write-own. What is a real Web3 use case? One really obvious use case is, uh, is, a, is a new way for creators to, uh, mo to make money. Yeah, well, the most obvious thing is just money. But is the key difference easier micropayments? Is the key difference sort of being able to sell collectibles more readily, say with the NFT model, rather than signed t-shirts? Th those no, don't it's, it's sound, the they don't sound very big to me. Suppose Spider-Man was a DAO, right? And suppose that like the Hulk was a DAO and the Thor was a DAO and then Iron Man is a DAO. And then suppose basically as a fan, right? You could act as a Spider-Man fan, you could actually own a share of Spider-Man. You could take PG&E and you could replace it with a decentralized solar grid, grid that's organized by blockchains. Um, wouldn't it be great if we kind of all own the power grid? But I think the fundamental difference is with crypto, you can structure organizations so that they're um, flatter, right? They're not hierarchical. So I think the reason that this group wants to buy the constitution is because it's a document that represents, I think, a lot of the same things that the, the, the Web3 ethos shares with the United States. Why would I get a lower cost of capital from a random person versus a massive bank like Wells Fargo. Well, you wouldn't, I mean, it'd be from a pool of people. I don't know. If I'm using a MetaMask account today, I could decide not to use a MetaMask account tomorrow and use a different front end interface pointing to the same data that I own. Yeah, but then you give up all of the protections of having a bank. That's right. I really do think of what the blockchain is and cryptographically verifiable history as being the next step after written history. It's like on par with that. Again, it doesn't say that all the people who reported it were, uh, you know, they, they could have put something on chain that's false, but at least you know the metadata is likely to be very difficult to falsify. Let's say I have an excess of bandwidth. I would like to be able to share that with my neighbor and get paid for that. Share your Wi-Fi network with your neighbor? Really? That's the amazing blockchain future we've all been waiting for? We'll, you know, do roughly the same thing that we did in the last go around, which is that people are incentivized to build and install what are basically uh, miniature cell towers uh, on any property they have access to. So why would people want to become a mini cell tower? Crypto. Oh. We've been looking for what we call the iPhone moment for crypto and, um, you know, I think you could, you could argue that maybe Axie was it. One set of users can be, can kind of, who have more time than money can do this kind of work to earn money. And the other set of users who have more money than time can pay for it. Isn't this whole thing a Ponzi scheme? It's not that this is uh, in any way a Ponzi scheme. It's that you need to make sure that over time there's enough desire to continue to play the game for fun reasons that people are willing to invest into it. I would actually argue it's probably good for most 18 to 25 year olds to get scammed and lose the substantial majority of their life savings.